From the year 2000 to 2020, there were two big trends in CMOS RF. These are what I'm calling waves. The first wave was enabled by scaling. Process scaling contributed to the reduction of die size and power reduction. The second wave, fueled by the digital signal processing, enabled the rapid increase of the smartphone usage in 2010. If you look at the smartphone market, it reached its peak and has stood still since 2017. The wireless industry is trying to regain the momentum by having 5G as a new platform. We expect 5G will deliver a higher data rate and lower latency and more reliability. CMOS is a good process for digital, but it's not a good process for RF circuits. The current gain is low and subtrain is shared with very noisy digital circuits. RF engineers have to become more creative in preparing the next generation RF solutions. We are facing three big challenges. First one is RF performance gain from scaling has slowed down significantly. Scaling alone does not guarantee a better product. And secondly, the frequency band below 6 GHz is quite busy and crowded. If you want to have a higher data rate, you need to go to higher frequencies. And this is what's happening in 5G. These circuits have to work harder, and that consumes a lot of power. Low cost and low power, those are the two most important things. Digital connectivity is no longer just nice to have convenience. It is basically an instrumental part of our life. We're going to have 40 billion wireless devices by 2025. That's a lot of devices. At the end of the day, the onset of the third wave in CMOS RF really depends on how successfully all these new applications come together in digitally connected ways. It will be a very interesting period to see.